All right, men's fashion 101, what to wear in the summer. If you haven't seen the first men's fashion 101 video, which covered some of the basics of style in general, then make sure you check out that video after you watch this one. For now, let's talk about some of the basics of men's style in the warmer months of the year. Number one, shorts. When you think about summer clothes, you likely think about shorts right away. So let's start there. Shorts are one of those things that can make or break an outfit. So you wanna pay close attention to the type of short you're wearing, the fabric, the color, and the fit. A good place to start is chino shorts, with a seven or a nine inch inseam at the most. The inseam refers to the length of the shorts and you wanna avoid wearing shorts that go past your knee. The reason for this is because it'll make you look shorter and it's a lazier, less flattering look overall. The longest I would go is a nine inch inseam and it may also be the most comfortable inseam for a lot of guys that are getting used to wearing shorter shorts that don't go past the knee. However, if you are confident in the way your legs look and feel, a seven inch inseam also looks great. Anything shorter than that is gonna be a bit iffy in my opinions, but it's up to personal taste. Another short you should have in your arsenal is a casual short with a drawstring and also shorts with various textures. A pleated short is a nice detail that can add to your look and is something that very few guys will be savvy to wearing, so it'll make you stand out in a good way. Now, another note on the fit. I'm typically a fan of slim fit styles to complement your physique, but if you are a bigger guy, it's worth experimenting with shorts that have a little bit of a looser fit. The reason is that slimmer fitting shorts will draw attention to your midsection. Pleated shorts also have a way of doing this because the lines draw attention upward to the area. Experiment and see what you like, but a less tailored look can be beneficial for some of the bigger guys out there. Now, before I go on, let's talk about fabric. I'm a guy that suffers from sweating a lot in hot climates, so breathable fabric is a big deal to me. Heavy cotton, wool, and polyester items are generally a no-go. They're just too smothering and they have a way of creating a drenching sweat rather than wicking that sweat away. In order to prevent this, look for clothing that is made out of linen, lighter weaves of wool, poplin, chambray, seersucker, and breathable fabrics in general. You'll have to try some pieces on to really see if they're breathable or not though. Just because something is lightweight doesn't mean it's breathable. For example, saran wrap is very light, but it holds everything in. Pieces that are more breathable will also have a breezier and lighter look to them, such as a white linen shirt. The loose fit and airy style of the shirt goes well with a season and climate that is generally associated with sunshine and breezy conditions. It's also worth mentioning that in general, denim is typically a no-go in the heat, so I would avoid wearing any jeans or denim jackets. Denim tends to trap heat and is usually not as breathable as wearing chinos, which I would recommend instead. You can also roll the bottom of your chinos for a more casual look and to allow more breathability for your skin. Now moving on to shirts, the summertime can be a bit limiting in terms of style compared to colder months. The reason for this is that in colder climates, you have more options with outerwear and accessories, such as scarves, to mix up your look. When it's hot outside, we lose the majority of those outerwear options but there are still some things you can do to spice up your rotation of shirts. In the last Men's Fashion 101 video, I spoke about having a base of plain t-shirts in neutral colors and expanding out to lighter colors if you have a darker skin tone. If not, keep the colors more toward the dark neutrals if you have lighter skin. Also experiment with v-necks. And I know this is gonna sound douchey to a lot of guys, but trust me, a v-neck that is just enough to change up your neckline from a crew neck to a v-neck and isn't too deep will frame your face in a more flattering way and will give you a little more breathability in the hot weather. Again, this this is one of those things that a lot of guys won't be doing and it'll make you stand out in a positive way, so don't be afraid of the v-neck. Also look for t-shirts with Supima cotton. These aren't necessarily super breathable, but they tend to be quality shirts that will last you a while and retain their color and fit. They're personally my favorite kind of t-shirt. Now if you want to add a little bit of flair to a crew neck t-shirt, consider layering it with a patterned button-up shirt for an easy casual look that is more eye-catching. Patterned button-ups can also look great on their own and I personally prefer shirts that have vertical stripes as well as playing around with different textures. A button-up with a unique texture or pattern to it looks a lot more interesting than just wearing a typical plain cotton button-up and having a variety of textures in your wardrobe is an easy way to stand out from the crowd while still maintaining a sleek, minimal, and masculine look. Henleys are also another good casual option that are breathable and give a nice look that is a little bit of an upgrade from just wearing a t-shirt. When wearing these, it looks best to unbutton the top button and definitely don't be afraid to unbutton another button or two from there. This is more of a relaxed shirt, so you want to convey a more nonchalant vibe when wearing these. Polo shirts are another great choice in the summer and can be worn casually running around town doing errands or attending a lunch or a dinner where a smart casual dress code would be more appropriate. They go well with both chino pants and shorts and I prefer liquid touch polos over your typical cotton polo. Liquid touch polos are cooler and have a nicer finish to the fabric. Also look for polos that have stripes on the sleeve or collar as they can add a nice touch. Just whatever you do, avoid those polos with the big tacky logos on them. In fact, burn them with fire. <laughs> 
Now linen shirts are also great and they are comfortable to wear in hot climates due to their ability to wick away sweat and dry quickly. Linen shirts look great at a resort on vacation or in a beach environment and adding something like a Panama hat and some sunglasses to your look can immediately give you a really cool summer vibe. Rolling the sleeves on a long sleeve linen shirt is also a nice option for an evening outfit and looks good with olive green or khaki chinos and a pair of loafers. Now speaking of loafers, let's talk about shoes in general because I need you to not be the guy wearing flip flops everywhere in the summer. In fact, as a rule of thumb, Thumb, you should only be wearing flip-flops and sandals at the beach or by the pool, if at all. No one wants to see your feet, they get dirty easily, and they are just a lazy footwear choice overall that guys are wearing too often in everyday settings, so don't do it. you also look ridiculous if there's ever an emergency and you're the guy tripping over your broken flip-flops trying to run. Instead of being the flip-flop guy, look at wearing options such as leather sneakers, canvas sneakers, espadrilles, boat shoes, drivers, and loafers. I covered white sneakers in the last video, but to briefly touch on them again, a white leather sneaker is versatile and can go with nearly any outfit from shorts with a t-shirt all the way to a suit for a more casual touch. I wear these all the time and I would recommend a pair of Stan Smiths to start with or common projects if you want to splurge a bit. Canvas sneakers are also a good casual option but have less versatility than a leather sneaker. They're good for running around town or hanging out at an event at the park but you wouldn't want to pair them with any upscale outfit. Keep these strictly casual and start with neutral colors like shades of white and gray to allow you to pair them with more outfits. As your wardrobe grows, look into experimenting with some different colors for more unique looks. Another plus to canvas sneakers is that they're almost always under $100. Espadrilles are another shoe that you should have in your arsenal. You can slip these on quickly which makes them a great replacement for flip-flops and they have the versatility to be paired with both upscale and casual looks. You can find espadrilles in a variety of designs and textures as well which is always a plus for mixing things up. If you're wearing espadrilles with pants it's a good idea to cuff your pants and roll them a bit. Having no break between your pants and your espadrilles usually doesn't look right and the cuff style lends itself nicely to a casual shoe. Oh and if you're not familiar with the term break what I mean by this is that your pants shouldn't be touching your espadrille or bunched up at the bottom. Instead, you would want a gap between the pant and the shoe to give some space. Now also wear no-show socks with espadrilles to keep the clean look overall and consider lighter colors for a more relaxed vibe, but darker colors work as well. Moving on to boat shoes, you want to reserve these for the warmer months exclusively. Don't wear them year-round. In fact, if I catch you in the rain in December with boat shoes, you're canceled. Boat shoes are also going to typically fit best with more minimal outfits or preppy looks because of the vibe they give off. No one is going to see a boat shoe and think that they're edgy, so pairing them with something like a leather jacket or streetwear doesn't really make sense. Instead, lean into their strength and pair these with linen shirts, chino shorts, and polo shirts. Just make sure to avoid an outfit that looks too stuffy or uppity and avoid popping your collar or wearing a blazer with them. Now, last but not least, you're gonna wanna invest in some drivers and loafers as well. Drivers are a type of shoe that are more upscale than a boat shoe, but below a traditional loafer. The standout feature of a driver and how to tell them apart from similar shoes is the sole, which has a bunch of rubber pebbles on the bottom, which are literally made for having more grip on the pedals while driving a car. Hence the name driving shoes or drivers. They can be worn with both shorts and pants and make a nice addition to any outfit that needs a little extra sauce. Keep in mind that drivers are not a shoe you want to wear if you're doing a lot of walking. You wouldn't want to be walking around a city for eight hours in these and they're better to slip on for short stints or laid back events. Drivers also look great with cuffed pants and more tailored fits in general. More traditional loafers are another shoe that look great with tailored fits and should also be in your closet. Loafers usually come in leather or suede and have a ton of uses. You can wear loafers to a wet with a suit or for a casual lunch date with shorts. They can be dressed up or down and they can provide a sharp look that other types of shoes cannot. There's a variety of loafers out there, but a traditional penny loafer is a good starting point. I also like horse bit loafers as they can look really sleek with the right outfit, which will usually be some combination of fitted trousers with a button up shirt or a blazer, but can also be pulled off with shorts and a button up. As I mentioned before, loafers tend to look best with more tailored looks, so avoid shorts and pants that are too loose fitting. Keep things basic to start with and get a leather or suede loafer in shades of brown or black. Also make sure to get some no-show socks to wear with them. And if you happen to be wearing a suit with loafers, make sure that the suit is kept casual. A linen or a cotton sport coat at the most instead of a full-on three-piece suit. Before you go, check out the links in the description below to see some of the things I have to offer. Watch this video next, and I will see you in the next one.